Hello, welcome to another one of my art classes. Today we are going to be painting this lovely painting right here. This sunset with a swan swimming on this lake or pond, whichever it is. Trees in the background. It is a lovely scene. It's going to be a good one to paint. The canvas I'm using right here is a canvas panel and it's 12 by 16 so you can use that you can use another one in a 4 by 3 ratio like 12 by 9 if you want something smaller or bigger if you want like a 24 by 18 go for that uh, this one like say 16 by 12 if you want to copy what I'm doing let's get on to the paints we'll be using we're using titanium white I will be using this cadmium orange hue but if you don't want to buy an extra one or get an, if you haven't got one of these already, we can make this similar sort of colour using yellow, red and white. So, saying that, I'll be using this cadmium yellow medium hue here. This napful crimson there is one we'll be doing and I'll be using this cerulean blue hue. And of course, some black for Mars black here. And I will be using, I use synthetic brushes because I don't like using animal related things for ethical reasons. But let's get on with which type we've got here. One of these, this is a two inch one for, they will be using for blending. This will be using for bringing some of these shadows down um, into the water, into the reflection, bringing those down to that's the use of that we're using one of these just to get initial paint down and fill in you know get rid of the white initially help get some paint on the surface quite fast we're going to be using one of these round brushes to do the trees get the trees going some little stuff here and there for throughout as well we're going to be using a fan brush which we'll be using to add some texture to the leaves here and maybe in a few other places too Going to use a fairly small, thin, flat brush here for most of the little details around the swan, some around here and on the trees and whatnot, some in the water. So we'll be using that for some of the finer detail stuff, and we'll be using a script brush for the fine stuff for the leaves and some of the stuff for the ripples in the water. So there's an idea of what you'll be doing. You need your own water pot. I'm going to pop these back in. Also have towel thing for, you know, wiping off your brush. You'll need that, particularly after we've done the blending. And do set up now. If you are set up, ready to go, then let's go. If not, then now's a good time to pause, get set up, and then restart again. Okay, and if you are now set up, let's get going. I'm going to start by measuring whereabouts we want our center line to be i mean i could quite easily just copy from here and put it here but obviously you won't have this example right next to you so halfway is going to be about there on the on the canvas panel here about there so it's about an inch just a little bit above whereabouts the uh, halfway point is and just do a little sketch along doesn't have to be um, a perfect straight line if you want it to be you can you know rule do a ruler or something on it but if not just a little sketch over like that as a rough thing doesn't need to be too precise because as you can see from here we're going to be pointing black basically over this anyway so it's nothing you need to worry too much about now we're going to get on with putting some colors on the canvas we're going to do white initially we're going to go the from the lighter colours in. The lighter colours at this side, we're going white, yellow, orange, and then a hint of red later on. So we've got white, yellow, orange here. So we're going to be doing the top and bottom first. Because obviously these colours will get all over the brush and some make it like, like bleed into others, like the darker colours. Like you need to really thoroughly clean them in order to get rid of the any residual effect of their being there. So get I'm gonna start with this brush here, just try and get the paint down fast. 
bring it up to somewhere around about a quarter up the canvas and some white maybe quarters a bit too high more like 20% a fifth so there you go there's that I'll need a bit more myself put that to one side And then onto the top bit. I hope my arm isn't in the way for you. There we go, there's the white done move on to the yellow so get a nice bunch of yellow down wash your brush off if you want it's up to you it's not imperative that you do but I'm going to get a little bit of it off and then get it on here that weird sound you hear I don't know if it's picking up but my dog's just literally just below here and <laughs> he's snoring loud snow. Now I'm going to switch over to the orange. If you haven't got orange and you've only got yellow and red, then what you'll want to do is use 60% red of whatever it is you're mixing, whatever little pile you're doing, where 60% is red. No, sometimes I'm using the wrong one. 60% is yellow, 20% is red, and 20% is white. And that'll roughly give you the sort of orange that you're after. If you, you may, you know, depending on how watery or opaque your paint is, how thick it is, you may want to add a little bit more yellow or a little bit more white. But it's down to you to kind of measure from what you're seeing and what you're trying. And like I say, I've got this orange I'm going to put on, so that's what I'll be do, using. Now of course I'm not going all the way down to the line because it would be a waste of paint because we're going to do black up to around here. If you wonder why I'm not going all the way up to the line. Alright, there's that bit done. Now we're going to get this brush right here and we're going to start blending which is, I'm going to start on the lighter colours here and we're going to be going side to side you know, just side to side like this on it be quite light, not too thick and we're just going to bring some paint into this some paint from that layer into that and you'll see it'll start to mix together nicely
I'm going to go on to this bit now, on the top two. hope my hand isn't too much in the way. There you go, there's a kind of nice transition there. And now we're going to go into the orange and work on that now. This lovely sunset colours, the brightness in the sky. If you feel you're getting too much paint like of orange on, then feel free now to wipe it off a little bit. Because it's possible if you try and then go up you'll get too much orange on your brush still and then it'll make this lighter stuff a different, you know, darker than you'd like. It's looking quite nice. I want to. If you do like me here, like you want to get a little bit of water on your brush to get some of the orange paint off to work on some of it, go back and add a little bit of um, adjustment to the other colours. You do will need to wash the paint off quite thoroughly so the orange isn't too thick. Now I'm going to get some white on my brush to just try and even this bit out here. There. There you go, I'm pretty happy with that transition from white to yellow to orange and then orange to yellow to white here. So I'm going to be popping that away right now for that. The next phase we're going to do is put some black on for this sh for the shapes here. But you, this is the spot you might want to wait a second and let it dry because it will just be easier. So feel free to take a little break right now if you want, let this dry for a second and then meet back in a, in a few moments. So if you've, your paint is dry now then let's get some black on our palette here so then we can get some paint down. I'm going to be using this brush right here, you'll need to wipe it off from whatever orange and yellow and white whatever's on the brush from previous use. This doesn't have to be any particular technique here for this bit, um, like any specific direction. The only thing I would say is leave a little bit of a gap here so that you know whereabouts your centre line is. Like you see here, I'm just leaving a little bit of gap to it, so I know whereabouts it is. you want the paint to run a bit smoother you can just dab it lightly into the water very lightly you don't want too much water on it otherwise the black will then run into this and it'll not be what we're after well lightly just helps the paint ease smoother as you apply it I'll leave that for the line. 
So I know where it is. Just bring it down to here now. I need to add a little bit more black. It's always good to put only a relatively small amount of paint on so you're not wasting it or taking up too much room in your palette that you can't mix colours. Because you put a giant pile over here and then I needed to mix a lot. Um, I might not have enough room or if I don't use it then it's a waste of paint. Now that's done, I'm going to pop that there and we're going to switch to the round brush here, you see. Here, we're going to add some of these little contours which was like a tree or bush line for the lake here. So we're going to add like, just make this like, um, give it a bit more, you know, indication of shapes like there's something there in the background. You don't want to do anything precise here, in, uh, symmetrical in terms of it, I mean, because nature isn't symmetrical. Trees are all be at different shapes, growing at different angles, seeing the light in different ways and therefore growing at slightly different manners, etc. But they'll all be slightly different. You see this final tree here on this side is going to be quite big so we can do a little bit more on this bit. I'm adding a small dab of water in to make it the paint run a bit smoother. There you go, and now what you'll want to do is replicate these same sort of shapes here, but make them a little bit deeper, like stretch them out. Imagine this bit here, imagine it's like stretched. So, it's the same sort of pattern, but it's stretched out a little more from the reflection. So rather than be this small here, it's going to be a little bit longer here, like that. Just keep going with this same thing, stretching it out a bit. This doesn't have to be completely precise because obviously we're going to be doing a bit of work with this, stretching out the shadows and reflection of it.
All right, if you're done with that, now we're gonna switch over to this brush here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dab a little bit of water on the end, not too much. Mix it in with the, the black paint. Wipe off a little bit of excess, you don't want too much. And we're just gonna, watch, just gonna very lightly, very lightly just pull it down, just gently pull it down with this. Just having the top hairs just bring a little bit of paint on it, just brush the canvas slightly. You're not pressing it down, you're not dragging it that way, you're lightly kind of bringing it back this way. So, I'll do an example here. Use a hint more water, I think. I'm just trying to stretch out these shadows into the water, make them a bit streaky. It's so alright to take it slow with this if you would like to. Be careful with it or if you even want to practice on a bit of paper or something to the side that's perfectly good too Go. That looks pretty good if you ask me. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we're going to set that in the water and we're going to go back to our round brush here. If you're done with that, if you're not, then obviously pause it now if you need to finish that. I know I went through it a bit fast there. Now, um, if you are ready to go with this now after doing that, we're going to add the initial line of these trees, just the basic first line up here on these. Because the rest we're going to use the thinner, smaller script brush, but this is just to add like the thick trunking where we want it. So, you can either use it straight with the brush like I'm doing, or if you want you can just draw a line of where you want to do the, the have the tree go, like gorgeous. Just this, this one's going to taper to the left like that, so I can, like that, I can just follow that line. Be very quite light with it. You're not trying to, look how I'm holding the brush here, you're not trying to go all the way down or press in, you're just holding it at the end, being quite light with it. Because we're going to add obviously more stuff in the in a minute, and you don't want to make too thick a line for this, particularly because then there's a chance um, you'll do a thicker line on top here than here, and then you'll have to make this one thicker because this is the base of the tree where it would be thicker than this, all by making this bit too thick and being too heavy-handed with it. So you've got to be quite light with it to make sure, particularly higher up the tree, because that's where it's going to be thinner.
too much paint on my brush there that was going to make a big mark if you do see that then do wipe a little bit off I need a bit more paint on my brush when it does that effect. And a few small things here, you can just do this if you want down here. A few smaller marks. This one because it's a big tree on the side here we've got we've got like a tree here like a, a rounded one and then a taller thinner one towards the top here so you kind of have to indicate that it's going to be the thin one towards the top and then more the rounded one here feel free to do this in this bit helps add some indication of the shape it's having a good snore isn't it my dog And now, before we go onto the script um, brush where we add like the smaller branches and stuff to this bit, wipe this brush off from the water and let's go back to it and just add a little bit more coming down where you've put the trees. Because obviously these bits are where it's going to, the reflection is going to come down the longest because this is the biggest part sticking out in the sky so like here for example I'm going to be bring it out that's a bit more a representation of how it's going to be there so I'm going to move on to the script brush now which is this long thin one I'm going to get some black paint on it not too much and we're going to be quite light again with it and just just go off in directions to indicate branches doesn't have to be particularly ordered or patterned just obviously the thinner marks towards the end as they would do with actual trees. Make sure they go off in 
in various directions. some small ones for this stuff here two Now if you want you can add um, a little bit of um, indications of like leaves and things on the end by a few dabs here and there using the end of your brush. not going to do too much we're going to add a few more with the fan brush in a second that give a slightly better indication of foliage and leaves on the trees so if you'd like to pop that brush you were just using in the water and switch to this, the fan brush. We can now get to this, get the black paint on. Don't get too much, wipe a little bit off. And for this, I suggest initially at least, just use one side of it, because if you do that, that's gonna be a big mark. Just try and using like the side of it, and look how I'm holding it. Be quite free with it, and then just use the side. Just helps indicate a suggestion of foliage on the tree, you have to be a bit beyond there, there you go, beyond the branches, just to indicate where leaves are, pick up a bit of paint, don't use too much of it, it's going to be about delicacy this is. Particularly when you're doing it away from where the branches are, you have to be quite light to indicate that whereabouts there's leaves just away from the branches, the thicker foliage and then the light stuff on top.
just making sure my there's a hint of water in this so it moves nicely and then wiping any too much paint off the brush so I don't get big thick effects There you go, I think I might leave it at that now for this bit. There. Now whilst we got this actually out, it might be a good idea to do this and then just dab away at some of these marks. Then we get get rid of some of the white line but not completely get rid of all of it so then you can at least see a little bit of where it's at still just enough so then when you use some white later to do this line you see whereabouts you want to put the white see it just breaks up the line makes it barely visible but still visible just about And if you do it like that, you could even leave it like that without any white paint. So, clean off your brush with your towel, or like me, I sometimes use my shorts. Because I've got shorts, I'm happy to get covered in paint. And I'm going to add a little bit of red. A small amount, not much, like there on the side. And you see here. I'm going to get some water, try and wet it up a bit, as red, red is a very potent colour, it will kind of overtake other things if you let it, because of like it sees through more than others, so watering it down, diluting it a bit, getting this on, and we're just going to dab it into here, indicating like the shadows through the parts of the trees. Um, with the light shining through and it dark and everything where some of the orange looks red through these dark trees in the silhouette So just adding a few specks of red here and there Particularly to your, on the little baseline here where the orange is And the occasional mark on the tree to indicate where it's dark and light have come through. Just very, very light moments here. Not too much. Right, now that's done. Now we have to add a little bit of red as a result of putting some there into this. So you can just use this, make sure you haven't got much paint on your brush. You've got your little watery red here. And just lightly bring it down in this. Just add a little bit of that tone of red into it.
Nou, als het water done for me. Uh, hope yours is basically the same point. If you need another moment, just you know, keep going. I think now is a good point um, if you want a break to take a break after this because next we're going to move on to the water and stuff here. So if you want to give this a moment or two to dry, that's fine. I probably need to change the battery in this camera anyway. So I'm going to pause it now. I said, well, you won't notice because I'll just the video will keep going, but I'm going to pause for a second. You can pause for a second if you want to take a break and let it dry and then come back in a second to continue on with the next phase which will be the water and the swan. Okay now that we're done with a little break and I've changed the battery in the camera let's get on with this. Next we're going to look at this the lines of the wash um, the ripples going out from the swan swimming through the water so we're going to look to whereabouts we roughly want the swan to be which is obviously just off center probably somewhere here and what we're going to do to draw the the actual swan in we're going to create what's the term I'm going to use some vine charcoal because there's um, sometimes the dark things. Um, pencil doesn't work that great sometimes when you've painted on it already. So we're going to do a shape. I'm going to do it about here. You see this? I want you to just draw that shape in to start with which as you can see is not too dissimilar to the body here except a few little adjustments based on the angle we're at but then you can also from that learn whereabouts you want to put this um, the line for the wash which is quite thin on this side which would be around here which I think is around maybe a quarter of the way up so you'd go out there like that and this side is slightly higher on this side because it's got further to go here you see um, so we probably if you want to mark it you can always put your finger where you want it or mark it there like go around I want it there so I'll then go So now I know whereabouts I want this. You want to see these corners here, you want to round them off a bit. Bring this side in a little bit so it's just before the line. You want to make a curve into this, make it more curved at the top. There. Then bring it over because the, the angle we're looking in a little bit, as you see, on this side into this bit, whereas this side's more further away. So we want it to here slightly further away there and it might come down a little bit further and more narrower here curve it off towards the base there so that is roughly going to be I think the last one and then we'll copy the same this, the reflection of that shape here there see that line down and then there and that's going to roughly be our reflection here as you see so it's quite simple to draw in that body so now what I recommend is if you've got if your black paint is still wet my a bit of mine still is use that if not get fresh black paint on here get your um, actually we'll go with the go with this the fine brush here this is good for this sort of thing we will just literally see this line here just 
doing a, a rough line here. It doesn't, you don't want it to be completely straight to be honest because it's supposed to indicate the wash of the water which will be moving in slightly different directions as the light hits it and the movement of the swan going forward. Same again on this side. A little bit around the there. So now I want you to wipe off that black paint off your brush and we're going to stick in some blue. We're going to get the initial body of the swan in. We want some of the blue that you've got here. Going to get some white. I've got some wet white here from um, previously when we did the sky still. So some of mine is still a bit wet so I can reuse that. I'm going to get a little bit of that. It's roughly 50-50 in terms of like 50% white, 50% blue for the initial bit that we're doing here. You can make it slightly darker if you prefer with a little bit more blue. I might, there you go. It was a bit too light, my version then. Then we're going to draw in, paint in the body here, as it were. There's a slant down there for the body. long curve for the back as we can see inside imagine this bit this triangle there is the wing on this side this is the broader triangle about there for this side because of the angle that we'll be looking at this um swan from then fill it in here And um, feel free to do the same with the body here. You don't have to be as precise here because it's they're going to be ripples, so it won't be an exact match anyway. So if you want to do it slightly over the edge, once or twice like this, that's perfectly fine. Mine's a bit too far out that way, but we'll be putting colours on it anyway, so I can go over that. Some of this stuff you can um, rectify if you make any tiny errors. Anything that you'd like to slightly change, you can do it when we put the reflection of the water in shortly. Okay, and now I want you to go back to this brush. Get, get a little bit of black on your brush here, very light amount, not too much at all. And I want you to go across here like this. Do it on, do, you can do practice on some paper first if you prefer, or do it over the darker bits here already, so you, you can kind of get the sense of, we're just trying to put some lines in the water. And you don't want it to be a complete thing there, you want to do a little bit random not very strong and not long ones either you make them nice and short just to indicate the darker parts of the wash behind the swan as it moves. See that's a little bit too light, I need a little bit more paint on my brush for that but the same sort of like thinness of it was good, like how light I was and being able to get like the top hairs, the top gaps in them by being quite slow and just touching the top hairs rather, well, not hairs but brush hairs I suppose because it's not hair, it's synthetic but the top parts not like the big bulk of the brush, just the little ends. There you go, a little bit darker, very gentle. Just adding multiple indications there. 
feel free if you're coming from this side to almost curve it in slightly from the wash going round like that. And if you do get any on um, the swan here, the swan's body, then don't worry about that as will be obviously a lot of work, some work still to do on it. Putting the neck in, adding different tones for where the shadows are, etc. You can fix that easily enough. I want to bring some in here too. Now we're going to switch to the script brush here to do a similar sort of thing only with slightly more paint on the brush. Just to add some darker ones in there. particularly going out from this part. Feel free to do a little bit round the body of this one so it's very easy to for it to stand out a little bit more. I need a little bit more black paint. This is virtually, this is all very watery. There, I need a little bit darker just for suggestions. This is again very thin, holding it quite far back on the brush just so it's quite loose and light. strong one. When painting with acrylics you usually do go from dark to light because it helps the highlights and different lighter colours pop a bit more. If you wonder why we're doing the black first rather than the white. That was a bit too much there. Thing if it's watery and you don't mind doing it, you can just wipe it off a little bit. Look at my finger from trying to adjust the ones that are a bit too much for my liking. A bit too strong or thicker mark of black. Alright, now I'm going to bring these shadows in a bit more for that water there. This wash here. And a little bit around the edge of this bit of this reflection and feel free to do a little bit darker bits here on the body here just to indicate these where the wings are going to be on this swan because we're not painting them in in great detail but we it adds to the shape of the body it lets you know the shape of the body of this one Helps give it a, like a 3D effect for the curvature. Ok, 
can add the occasional light mark here if you would like. Okay, I think it's ready for a bit of um, white now. Clean up your brush. In fact, actually, let's go on to, let's use this one again. So clean off this brush and we'll add the light effect of white on it. Now you will have to be very light with this because the white will show up even more on this sort of stuff than the black will because there's already a lot of black down. So you have to be very careful to be quite light with this. Particularly the further back you go. I mean it's not too bad doing it on this bit but the further back you go, the perspective, it should if anyway, the colours kind of fade and blend almost into each other more. So if you want to start closer. I need to get a bit more on my brush there. See, I got a bit too much there. Now to get a little bit of this, get it going, moving my the things are stuck together a little bit. I was trying to widen them out a bit then. Just little bits, little touches, not too much. If you do go over anything a bit too much in with the white paint, you've got the black paint right there. If you want to go over it, and you can use either one that you can, or the brushes that you think best does the job. If it's a small bit you need to correct, the script brush or the small flat brush is probably best. If it's a little bit bigger than one of the others. Just add a little bit of a hint of the texture of the water going backwards. That's a weird bit there. Right, I think I'll leave it at that for that part. Just concentrate on this bit now. There you go, I think I'm done with that part now. I'm going to switch to. I'm not sure which. The flat brush, I think. And just add a little bit of white onto this here. Of 
the wash that this one's creating. Just little dabs here and there on the, along this line indicates the light and dark parts of the wave that they're creating. And a little bit on this bit here where the darker bits are. Right, and now I'm going to switch to the script brush to add a few white reflective marks into the water. Like this, you see, like they're quite light again. Just some white marks, try and make the white pop a bit. You wonder why we're doing the reflection first, it's because you won't be able to do nice smooth marks over this bit because this is where the neck will be. So this allows you to get the texture in the water in and then do the swan's neck and head over the top. Some people paint the texture of uh, water slightly differently. So if you have like certain marks that you make and you go, I like them, I like how that bit looks, you might want to do more of them. Like I quite like these side things and then a little bit here to indicate like a wash where there's a, where it's then filtering back in from this big bit on the outside. That's why you see me putting some white in here. Not many more now, so I don't want to do too many of these. Just a few to even out these spots in between using the other brush. I do need to smudge it out or paint over any that are too thick. Go ahead. I think I want some white ones in with these dark lines here. I want the occasional white one. Just to highlight the difference between them.
little bit more white in here. Okay, and now I think I'm ready to, well, that's a bit thick, ready to add a hint of blue in with all these, and then we can end by doing the, the swan's head and neck. I'm going to go straight for the normal blue, the like pure blue bit first, and see how that looks. I'm not going to do too much, just a little bit, and see if I want to add any of the lighter blue as well or not. But if this white paint is a little bit wet, then it might look lighter anyway. I think I'll switch to this um, flat brush. It's a bit easy to move the paint around with this one than this script brush. Yeah, maybe a little bit of light blue. Don't want to do too much. Just a few hints for the blue. Few different shades here and there Do with the white and without Slightly light, that's a bit too much blue. Just an indication of the colour in the water, add a bit of variety to it. The orange and blue are actually colour opposite, so it kind of pops a bit with this orange of this sunset, too. A little bit of light there. It's up to you now too, if you see this and you go, mm, I could do some darker in there, some darker, some black in there. Like this one you see has got a bit more black in here than this. It's up to you how you prefer it, if you like the look of how, if it's say similar to this, you like the look of it and you want to keep it. If not, you can always go back in with the script brush or this brush and get uh, a little bit of black in here. I'm not sure if I want to, I'll see if it's. Uh, I think it's needed when I've done the... Um, when I've done this one. Although now might be a good time if you've got a line of this there to get rid of some of the black. Because I, I, mine's at a point here I could have left it if I wanted. But I'll get rid of a little bit of it. And then clean off the brush. Because obviously if you don't get all the black paint off, if you use some white in a second, then the white is just going to look grey, because the grey and the black will mingle. So if you want to do... Just little touches along where this line would be, very faint, just glancing the surface. If you do any part of it a bit too much white, you can always go over it with black easily enough to write any potential interpretation that is an error. I got a, mine's a bit thick in the middle here. I'd quite like to. You have to be careful when you do this, but if you do this, then watch where you put your, your palm because you might inadvertently put it on wet paint. So I'm trying to keep. A distance not doing that just fine-tune that slightly because this indicates a bit of water washing against the far bank so it doesn't need to be too thick because this won't be it won't be washing up against it at a speed like some like the 
waves at a beach or something. This is just a pond or a lake, so it'd be quite gentle. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that there. For that, and I think I will add one or two dark lines in this with this black paint. It is a bit too light for my liking. There are just a few light marks here and there. Because this is a painting that's not very subtle, the bright sunset, the dark and light opposites in the water, the swan that in the in the fading light looks more blue than white, whereas we know swans are obviously white. So this isn't a very, um, and obviously the blue being an opposite to the orange. Everything kind of is quite strong contrast in terms of the colours, black to white, orange to blue. It all is supposed to is like quite contrasting and eye popping as a result. So it's good to if that's what we're going for to maximise that by adding some of these slightly darker bits in as needed. Just a bit more dark in there. A couple more, then I think I'm done. Going back, try and make some of these more subtle. It's also good if you see any that you think are a bit thick, like this one. You can just add a little bit of black underneath it, going into it, and it just breaks it up and makes it look smaller. There you go, I think I'll leave it at that for that. One more just there, and yes, I think I'll leave it at that there. Now we've got to obviously do the big important thing, which is <laughs> drawing this one's head and neck. Got my charcoal vine. You see, it's quite simple, it's like um. I would just say, if you've seen a 
hockey stick, you know, like um, not ice hockey, but you know, normal astroturf type hockey. It's a bit like the sort of shape of one of those um, sticks, hockey sticks. What we're going to do is we're going to start from here on this side, and we're going to take a make the slight elongated S. And if you see right here, this bit here, it's about twice the size of the body. So if the body is say like say one inch, then the head is and the neck and to the head is another inch, so it's about two inches high, but roughly. So if you see I've done this bit, then I'm going to bring the curve in about this far and then about the same size of the body again in and then make I'm going to leave that there now and I'm going to make it thicker towards the bottom obviously here this and then it's going to taper in following it quite closely into this bit I want you to bring it to a point there like that and then we can turn add a circle onto that there like an oval see that and then we can just add a little line for the beak there so we'll break it into shapes we've got the S we've got the oval here for the head and then a little outward line flat from the bottom for the beak. Now suggest you probably use the flat brush, get some of your blue paint, add a small dab of black to make a darker colour here and then paint it in. Be quite delicate with it. And as we've got um as we've got this colour in and you've got the shape that you've just drawn, you've got to replicate it below, but do it a little bit smaller because Unlike these that are stretched because they're in the distance, this bit's quite close up, so it's going to be a little bit, the um, reflection is going to be shorter as a result. So you want to, probably nice to mark out where we actually want the head, so you can, like I want mine about there, like the, where the neck, the curve of the head's going to be, so I want that there. So it helps me figure out how to follow the head, the, replicate this shape here into this space here. So it's going to be go there, round, and start to the curve of the head. Make sure I follow that again. This side, taper it in. Bring it to a point. Add an oval for it there you go and then paint it in if you use vine charcoal it's quite easy to rub out or if you, even if it leads to mark now if you wait a little moment and then get a paper towel or something with a little dab of water on it will wash right you'll get straight off I'm happy enough with this. So let me get my drawing in there. Could do a slight more curve this way, like that. There you go. To the neck. I think now I'm going to use a dab of black for the beak here. Quite careful, don't want to do too much.
Also, because this is a, a reflection, you can then get a little bit of water on your brush and then just bring the lines out of it. Because obviously it's reflected in the water, so it might not be completely as it is. So it, gives you, it may help you cover up if you're not completely happy with your drawing either. In uh, the reflection, like, I'm not completely convinced of this reflection drawing, but the water moving around will allow me to just about um, cover that. in a way that makes it less noticeable. There you go, and now down add some darker stuff here where the light won't hit it because of the neck in the way and the underside of the swan's body. You want to add some of this darker blue that we just did here on the sides where the light won't be hitting it as much and then just the occasional mark indicating where maybe shadows of feathers are on the back of the swan swan's back there and perhaps a darker bit maybe on the inside here where the neck would be like the shadow from under the neck and a little bit of the neck underneath there. There you go. And I may want to add a little bit darker bit here. dark ring around the outside and a little bit more where we want the where I think the wings are likely to be that and then I think we should get a script brush here and go in with the light blue if you've got some left over if not then obviously 50% blue 50% white a little bit just add a few highlight bits here just to make certain bits pop on the back there the occasional stray bit where light hits the side Just light touches, detail. A little bit of that in the reflection. And then just slight highlights of um, on what will be this side because it's darker on this side you see here there might be a little bit of blue just showing on this side more of the neck so just a little bit of that not too much just enough to indicate a dark and a light side and then again replicate a little bit of that in the shadow in the reflection and a slight dab of white for the 
for the start of this uh, wash for the creating going forward to just a few dabs of white there I think maybe a few darker moments too then I think I'm done there I'm using this script brush just to do some small little marks There you go, I think I am pretty much done. There's a look at how mine looks. There's a bit of a shadow from the camera, I'm afraid. Get a proper look in a second. But, uh, if you're not finished yet, you know, continue to tinker as you may wish. If there's a few elements you want to add of your own, go ahead. Like, you know, birds in the trees, birds in the sky or something. I don't know, anything you like. Maybe you want to add an odd, uh, a different colour in there. Maybe you want to put some actual white into the swan to indicate the light being a bit brighter than I've suggested. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead. Um, I'd love to see how yours turned out. You can contact me on social media typically Instagram or the Facebook at, at Robbie Potter Art I'll put a link of that in the description you can check out more of my original artworks see if you're interested in potentially purchasing one or commissioning one too or even recommending a class at RobbiePotterArt.com um, until next time thanks a lot for watching this video and deciding to paint along with me have a good day have a great time hope this was fun for you and i'll see you in the next video